This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. I'm shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That cross touch your ball. And I will just have to transcend that. Now, that was a clip from a very, very funny ser series that's airing right now. DB, you're a big fan of it. And I brought I brought the star of it here with us today. Mm -hmm. DB, would you do the honors? Right now, we have with us Rachel Bloom, who stars in one of my favorite new series. It's called Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. There it is! <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who's had a crazy ex should watch this show, because I'm sure there's some situations they can identify with. But she's also the creator, the writer. She stars in it. So, I mean, that's pretty Sheesh. impressive. Yeah. Being a newcomer, a new face in the scene in the entertainment biz. So I was just wondering, like, how did you go about pitching something like this? You know what I mean? With being being a fresh face in the industry. Well, you know, I walked in and I just said, look at me. And they were like, well, okay. <laughs> and they gave me a golden gold. Um, no, so what I did was I, I was making music videos for a long time on my YouTube channel. And then a couple years into it, I get an email saying, Aline Brosh McKenna wants to meet with you to discuss a potential music uh, musical television show. Well, Lean Brush McKenna is the co-creator of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Mm -hmm. yeah. She wrote The Devil Wears Prada, 27 Dresses, We Bought a Zoo. She's like a, a wildly successful screenwriter. And so we met up on like a blind date and, and we were talking about, I, I kind of do these videos where I play like a manic character and there's always like a root of sadness. And she's like, well, I had an idea for a movie called Crazy Ex-Girlfriend about how love takes you over. Um, from from a woman's perspective, or from the perspective of the crazy ex, that what love does to your brain and makes and and, and turns you into like this monster that you ne you never necessarily mm -hmm, knew you were. Mm -hmm. And so we came out of that meeting knowing we were going to create the show. Wow. Have, have you ever been a crazy ex? Mm. I think we all have. Yeah. I mean, I think that. Oh, this... Well, I think more women have been than I'm. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I think more women have been crazy exes than men. No, you, you know what? No, I mean okay. I, I have I have heard just as many stories from guys, and yeah. I think no matter who you are, love is love is universal. And when I say love, what I'm really talking about is obsession. Yeah, because so romantic comedies are always focused on the will they or won't they, right? It's never yeah. about just like a happy couple because that's not interesting. No one no. wants to watch that. And and it's because we like the mating dance. We're mammals. Yeah, and we want the like. Does he like me? I can't tell if he likes th likes me. Like the push and the pull of like, oh, when are we gonna have sex? Are we gonna have sex? Yeah. And that's because it's this mating dance of like keeping us hooked, and it's our bodies trying to get us to reproduce. And when you are obsessed with someone, the reason it it takes over everything you have, it's not a want, it's a drive. It's it's located in the part of your brain that controls like hunger, thirst, sleep, and that's why it it makes you do things you otherwise wouldn't normally do. And this obsession, um, I, like scientists and, and psychologists call it limerence, uh -huh. is different from the deeper love that comes from when you've been with someone for a while. Because this attraction, it's biologically meant to last you from the time it takes to conceive a child and raise it until it can kind of fend for itself. Hmm. So the typical like obsession, unless you keep it going, yeah. lasts for like maybe around a year and a half Two and a half years, I think, is like ballpark. Makes so much sense. Damn. Makes so much sense, right? <laughs> yeah. And, it, and that's why it feels so involuntary, and that's why heartbreak really feels like, oh, it, it's it's taking away something that's it seems essential to your survival, right? And and so does, that does it last longer for women than men? Shut up, this sway. obsession. I mean, because we kind of <laughs> we can hit it and quit it, and not you know, and not think about it. Well, no. I think that I think there is something. Look, I think there's something for men. Men, I think can biologically, and I am not a scientist, so I might get this wrong, okay. I think that men can biologically separate sex from emotion a little better. Yeah. I mean, I know that men are more visual when it comes to attraction. It's it's why men are more likely to watch porn and, 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 and read dirty magazines, although, you know, I watch porn and I'm not a dude, so, and I think a lot of women watch porn, yeah. just don't talk about it as much. Okay, okay, um, that's but I, th honest. I think the idea of, yeah, you know, uh, I'll tell you my search terms, I don't care. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I think that the, the conflating sex with emotion and feeling all of these chemicals surge through you when you have sex maybe happens more to women, like yeah. maybe men can separate it better. You know, you hear that, but then some dudes I met don't line up with that at right. all. Did you see OJ? Yeah. yeah. Uh, to, to, to your character. <laughs> Does he know? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, I guess OJ's a cra crazy ex. So I would you so. compare Rebecca to OJ? 
<laughs> I'm going to go on record <laughs> and say I would compare Rebecca Bunch to O.J. Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> because this is a crazy uh, synopsis to this story here, Heather B. Rebecca mm-hmm. basically moves to California, right, yeah. to p- pursue a lost love yeah. from 10 years ago. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's doing everything in her power to get this person's attention who's acting like he's not really down for it. Mm-hmm. Do you bang out his friend or something like that? Or? Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's yes. kind of what happened. <laughs> that actually is what happened in the last episode. Yeah. Yeah. She's been spoiler alert. If anyone watches the show, <laughs> I'm sorry, don't my bad, my bad. don't don't listen to this. OK. If you haven't watched the episode or anyway, uh, in the last episode. So the whole season, she's been obsessed with this guy, Josh Chan. He has this friend, Greg, who's like kind of set up to be originally be like the guy she should go for and then he starts to hate her um but they came back around this last episode and we last left off on them going to uh, bang it out in the stock room of the bar he works yeah. in yeah so you know we'll see what happens that was very romantic mm. um yeah i love you saying bang it out too that it had a different ring can to I, it when you said, can, I can curse on here right try let's see what happens say something they go to fuck in the stock room oh hey. man we just got fired oh no what? <laughs> the walls of Sirius are, are, are literally, oh my God, oh, there's man. a demolition crew I, here. I can't believe you cursed on Sirius XM. Uh, Rachel Bloom is, I'm opening up the phone lines, 888-742-3345. Give her a call. Crazy ex-girlfriend is the name of the show. Also, we got a gang coming up. Uh, Sway in the morning, Shape 45. Here's a song that we're going to let you guys hear. called me up and said, want to hang out tonight. This is Rachel's big hit. It's the one that put her on the map. <laughs> see an indie film or just grab a bite. That's the classic hit right there. Fuck me, Ray Bradbury. <laughs> By the one and only Rachel, Rachel Bloom who's with us right now. And, 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 and he actually got a chance to listen to this song, right? He did, and I met him. You met Ray Bradbury? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was awesome about it, and I just asked him about his books the whole time. So did he expect to get some after you met him? Like, oh, my God. Was, was you know like? what? He he was very polite, and um, I can't <laughs> divulge any further what, Dep- what happened. With how yeah. far it went? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can't say. He's a lady. Wow, you don't kiss and tell. No. Okay, okay. Rachel, me and Sway. <laughs> I didn't blow him in my car. Okay, okay, that's good. Go. Let's be clear. Okay, it wasn't in your car. I wasn't in my car. <laughs> well, how old was he at the time? No. He was 90. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> that would have been a quickie. Wrinkle head. Oh. Yeah, worm. <laughs> Whoa. Like sucking worm. dirt. Uh, he uh. has since passed. Oh, 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 oh. He's dead. <laughs> so, I, I don't jerky. know. I, I, nothing sexual happened with him. He was a wonderful man and a great writer. Great author. And um, Ray Bradbury. I uh, apologize to anyone offended the fact that I said I wanted to blow him in my car. Yeah. You know, maybe I should have said blow him in a nice hotel room. Then right. it would have made a difference. It would have made a it difference. Would have been more classy. Classy. Uh, Rachel Bloom has joined us. Eight 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 seven four two three three four five. We got John from Indiana on the hey, line. Hey, John, what's John, what up? up? John. I, how you guys doing today? Doing Chilling. okay, man. Hey, uh, uh, I just wanted to let Rachel know, first of all, I like the show because it's, it's kind of unique. And Thanks, I John. almost went on vacation to West Covina, but I didn't think you'd be there, so I changed my plans and went to Vegas instead. No! <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, but no, I just want to tell you I love the show. Um, you know, and periodically I got to catch myself from breaking out into song and dance in the middle of my life. So that's your fault. That makes me so incredibly happy. Wow. I'm glad that I'm infecting you with song and dance, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, you're a citizen, man. Sway in the morning. <laughs> really quick, Rachel, your uh, yeah. honest opinion. Do you think guys are actually attracted to a little crazy? Um, yes, I, well... I think nah. I think it depends on the guy. I think it really depends on the guy, to be honest, because okay. I've seen it both ways. I've seen, you know, there is something, there's something inherently that feels unhealthy and sick when you're really obsessed with someone. And yeah. I find that in my own life, the people I was most obsessed with, I was almost obsessed with them because I knew they were repressed, right? And you want to like, you want to have almost that ownership over someone where it's like, well, I know yep. they kind of suck, but around me, yeah. I bring out their good side, right? So there's something really attractive about a person that's something off about them that seems unhealthy because there's there's like a not having there, right? There's something that you can't quite 
possess. And that's, again, like in any romantic comedy, will they or won't they? When will mm-hmm, they get together? Mm-hmm. I think anything that's like, quote unquote, crazy or someone has some sort of mental problem, it gives you that feeling of having to reach for something that just like makes you want it more that even when you have them, you never quite have them have mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Damn, you, you shit. She deep into it. She <laughs> broke it down. She <laughs> broke. She in it. Right. She committed. Rachel, you're heavy. Yeah, man. You're deep. I'm yeah. into you're that. Deep. I know. Yeah. Mm. Um. And in one second, she says something like that. You feel like you're in a lecture hall at Columbia University. And then. And then she'll joke about sucking Ray Bradbury's dick in a, in a car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The dichotomy of your Gotta personality. Yeah. They're, that, that's the only two elements. That's it right there. Basically, either lecture hall or just like. Suck, <laughs> sucking on that D, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> My kind of girl. Sucking All right, that uh, D, yeah. D, D. <laughs> DB, you got a game? Yeah, she's so honest. We figured we'd have her play. Keep it real. Yeah. Here on this show, we like when our guests are honest and upfront. So we came up with a few questions, and all we ask is that you keep it real. Right now, on Sway in the morning. Keep it real, Rachel. This is my dream. All right, this, this is, is it, right? This oh, is this is it. great. Forget, forget that Golden Globe thingy you won or something, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Done. The All real right. dream. Question number one. Yeah. Would you rather actually fuck Ray Bradbury or get back with your worst ex? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, a, this is, okay, assuming I'm not married, because yeah. that's a whole other implication. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'd, I'd, oh, I'd, ra- I'd rather fuck Ray Bradbury. No, wow. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Ex boyfriend is crying right now. Yep. <coughs> Number two, you Especially had a guess. Especially because Ray has died already. He's, so, he's, he's, exactly. Like, that's saying a lot. All right. You, you had a guest role on How I Met Your Mother in the episode The Drunk Train. Yes. What's your worst drunk experience? Well, I'm gonna say something really lame, and that I haven't thrown up in 10 years I have never really thrown up from drinking is because it's because my body um, makes it go out the other end instead um, <laughs> oh baby okay next question uh, so my worst drunk experience are all the nights that I've spent in agony on the toilet going like why did I have that peach martini oh yeah it's a lot yeah it's, it's diarrhea it's di- I'm talking about diarrhea <laughs> diarrhea alright talking about my diarrhea wow. was that, that story was not as sexy as you wanted no no you wanted to be like oh my god no. I got I, I like took out my time and I was in a threesome. No, no, it's just diarrhea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that didn't work for me. Right That's too. what it sounds like. Shit. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> you now, sure you want to ask another one there? I, hey, like right, one I, like one. I love shit jokes. <laughs> one more. One more. One more. All right. I'll give you an easy one. Yeah. T- top five favorite comedians of all time. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> the easy one. Um, um, Well, comedians, I'm also going to include writers. So I would say... Uh, George Carlin, Joan Rivers, oh. Tina Fey, oh. Carol Burnett. Wow. I'm choosing. And the fifth, I'm going to say Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks. Wow. Oh, that's the first time no, not one black person was put on the top. Oh, my God. You are 100% right. You're 100% right. Wow. That's the first. I'm, um... I'm racist, um, <laughs> clearly, um, and uh, so I'll just, I'm going to leave. Okay. Uh, I didn't include one black, God, I'm fucking well, terrible. Just throw one on honorary. I fucking hate honorary white people. Honorary black me. I, I say all the time to my friends, I'm just like, God, I hate white people. <laughs> I'm so like, I always apologize. I'm just like, I'm so sorry that I'm white. I hate it. It's so annoying. Now, that's a great list, though. Joan Rivers. Yeah. Carol Burnett. I still watch her. I ordered the the Carol Burnett. You know how they do the, uh, the DVDs. Disc? I have yeah. that too. Yeah. And I just well, I just met her the other day, so she's very present in my mind. She's lovely, isn't she? She's well. great. She's wonderful. But I want to say, yeah, a lot of my list were Jews. Here's the okay. thing: is like, <laughs> is like, is like, yeah, I'm a Jew, so I gotta list all the Jews. The Jews, I ain't no problem. But there are black, there there are black Jewish comedians. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> is Eric Andre black and Jewish? I don't know. Who, oh, who are you going to say? Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg. No. Oh, no, she's not. No, 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 that's okay. It's also right. Cause look, black comedians come Rachel, up here all the time. Rachel, you can name one still. You got no, but, but Eddie black Murphy. Co- black comedians don't name white comedians? <laughs> she could. They don't? We've had some black comedians that didn't name a one white person in the top five. R- we oh, I don't know how Richard Pryor is in on her list, but I, Richard that's not Pryor's me. amazing. Uh, uh, okay, that. I was, I was, I guess I was. I, 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 have you noticed I've gotten more and more Jewish as I'm like explaining myself? I'm just like I, 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 I guess I was naming people who like directly like influence like how I write, but no, I mean Richard Pryor kicks okay. everyone's ass. He's Dave unbelievable. Dave, Sh- of course. Okay. Yeah. 
Just tell me some black people. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get Rachel out of here so she don't feel like bad. This. Rachel, we're joking with you. Rachel, <laughs> Rachel like, it's hot. Rachel, boom. Like, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Crazy and- ex-girlfriend Monday is on CW. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was lovely, Rachel. You All made right. it, Rachel. Okay, you we got K. It. Michelle coming up next. You want to talk with K. Michelle with say that 742 That's it for Rachel, y'all. Not just <laughs> It's Sway in the Morning, only on Shade 45.